Hey there guys, all right, today we are back with some more Geography Now, and we are on to San Marino. As I was going through the Geography Now A to Z playlist to get today's video to react to, I noticed something. They no longer have Kitsi Kwaka on that, on that playlist. So I wonder if they finally realized that one of their prank uh, videos was in the uh, legitimate playlist. Um... Just saying, if it wasn't like that when I watched it, when I watched that video, that Kitsi Kwaka was in the official A to Z countries playlist. Um, but anyways, trying to contain the yaps still at the beginning of these videos. So before we dive in, make sure you go and check out the links in the description box below. I would love to join the Discord and follow me over at Twitch. And please do go check out the gaming channel here on YouTube. And with all that said... Let's dive into San Marino. Imagine you're a dude running away from some guy trying to kill you. You escape pirates. You start a new life on uh -huh. the beach. Then, just when beach life is going great, some crazy lady you never met claims that you her baby daddy and you just... God, that's such an old ass meme, dude. That was when I was in middle school. Left without paying no damn child support. So you run away to the mountains. You build a fortress. Then a bunch of other runaways in a similar situation to yours join you hmm. and you become a community. In a very butchered, condensed format, that's basically how this place became a country. Welcome to the world's best hiding spot, keeping it down low, San Marino. It's time, time to, to learn geography, geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. Welcome to the fifth smallest country in the world, the oldest sovereign country in the world, with the oldest constitution, and the smallest republic. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, you guys have less land area, but you also have over 166,000 square miles of ocean territory, so... Eh. Well, bullshit. I actually won this round. Congrats, <laughs> Nauru. Oh, and as you guys know, this video was shot during the COVID-19 pandemic times, so in compliance with social distancing practices, this video was shot in my office. Caleb and Jillian live here, so obviously they are quarantining with me. They can be in these videos. Art is one of my closest neighbors. He is within walking distance, so he'll be a regular. Also, we are limiting our guest host to one a week, and this time, this week, it will be Hannah. How you doing, Hannah? What is that that you are holding on to? And this week on Geography Now, we have merch. And uh, where can you get all this at, Hannah? Geographynow.com. I'm gonna leave the shirt on. I think it's good. Should we sure. match the whole time? If, if you want, sure, yeah. Listen, guys, we take huge precautions with face masks, we have hand sanitizer, and we film all these segments in different time slots so we are avoiding crowds. Speaking of which, Hannah, you need some hand sanitizer. There you go. This yeah, is yeah. how Paul pays me. And I'm probably gonna steal some toilet paper on this my way out. Our... Anyway, San Marino, started by one guy, St. Marinus, or. Honestly, we laugh now at that. And honestly, you would laugh at that time, but like. I was I was working at an Aldi. Uh, I had put in my two weeks, literally. Uh, what was it? It was like the I put in my two weeks the week before everything started going crazy. Um, um, I had done that because I had wanted to pursue something else creatively. It was before I started doing YouTube. Um, but I had wanted to start more actively, like I had the money saved up, I could afford the rest of school, but I wanted to also actively pursue, um, acting. And then the COVID started. And so I never pursued the acting. Um, but, uh, yeah. Always out of toilet paper. It was so fucking stupid. So we laugh, we look back at this now and laugh mainly out of just because I kind of forgot how crazy shit was. But yeah, no. Um her needing to probably steal some toilet paper is an actual likely valid thing she has to do because she's unable to buy any at a grocery store because of the fucking freaks in that exist in this world. Oh man was it and you know what? I'm I'm still salty about this. It was like a couple weeks after I had left Aldi. I go back into that store to I had to pick something up. It was like probably milk or something. I'm talking to one of my former coworkers. He's like, you know, if you had just stayed for like one more week, you would have gotten uh, hazard pay. <laughs> you would have gotten a small bonus for working during those crazy two weeks. I'm still very upset, he spaghetti, about that one. That's money, man. All I had to do is list like one more fucking. I didn't know. I'm not used to corporations actually, you know, can't... 
Cause like if if I if that if that had been when I was working at like fucking GameStop or something, or any of the previous jobs I've had, none of them would have given me money for working that he- during that hectic time. No, Aldi remains the only company that would have that I've worked. For, so it's just like God damn it. <laughs> Anyways. San Marino. San Marino. And it grew into the small, hard to find microstate that it is today. Let's find it on the globe now, shall we? Bum, bum, bum. San Marino, sometimes called the Most Serene Republic, is kind of like a miracle country. It was made from a bunch of people trying to escape persecution. And like, they've survived almost two millennia of dodging almost every major battle and war because the aggressors were like, oh. You're so adorable and non-threatening. You know what? Go ahead. I don't need to attack. Stay independent. In any case, they've held it together and kept their sovereignty locked down in the hills. And here's where they are. First of all, the country is completely landlocked within the country of Italy, straddling the borders of the Emilia-Romagna and Marche regions of Italy. At only 24 square miles or 61 square kilometers, they are the third smallest country in Europe after the Vatican and Monaco and have no former border control with Italy. The country is divided into nine municipalities or castelli, meaning castles, and the small capital with only about 4,000 people named, like the country. Wait, hold on. What is the horror of the Castellis? Castles. I won't see these names. Borgo Maggiore. Aquaviva. San Marino. Cisanova. Fiorentino. Montagiardino. Petano. I'm sorry. <laughs> and the small capital with only about 4,000 people hey. named, like the country, San Marino, <clears throat> is located in the San Marino municipality. The capital sits on the western slope of the highest point of the country with incredibly narrow hairpin turn roadways and a ridge trail that goes to the other two That's famous cool. towers of San Marino. If you want to get there without driving, a good alternative would be taking the aerial cableway that starts in Borgo Maggiore at the bottom and goes up 166 meters to the top. As no, that's too steep for me. No, 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 no. I don't like it. The landlocked nation, of course, they have I'll no seaports. Up. They do have one incredibly small private airstrip in Toraccia, but for people wanting to take commercial flights, everything must be done through Rimini's Federico Fellini International, about 15 kilometers away on the coast in Rimini, Italy. This airport works with San Marino and does actually have a granted customs for San Marino that visitors can use and report to. From there, the only way in is by road on one of the many entrances from all sides of the surrounding Italian border, the busiest one being the Italian. Italian SS-72 highway into Dogana. Keep in mind, the country actually used to be even smaller, but in 1320, the community of Chiesa Nuova joined, and in 1463, four other communities joined, Faitano, Fiorentino, Monte Giardino, and Serravale. Since then, the border has not changed, and they've stayed the same size from then on. Small hmm. country, but it's got everything it needs. So by now, you're probably wondering. Okay, for real though, how on earth did they avoid not getting absorbed by Italy? Well, for one, as the story goes, St. Marinus, or San Marino, was a simple Christian stonemason from the island of Rab in the Dalmatian coast. Back in those days, the Roman emperors were actively killing Christians, and Diocletian had a target on Dalmatia. San Marino ran to Rimini, started a whole new life on the beach, then some crazy lady, or ladies, depending on which version of the story you heard, claimed he was their estranged husband that left them. Annoyed by this, he ran to the mountains and built a monastery as a hermit. From there, other persecuted... Valid response to just women in general. They're scary. Christians heard of this mountain safe haven and they began to congregate there and built a fort. Originally, all this land belonged to Lady Felicita, a Roman noblewoman. One day her son got sick and St. Marinus supposedly had the gift of healing people and healed her son. In gratitude, she gave the mountain to him and his community. So according to the story, that's basically how the country started. Before he died though, St. Marinus's last words to his people were, uh, I leave you free from both men. Wait, what? Most people assume he was referencing the Pope and the Emperor. This was kind of like the inspirational driving force that led the people of San Marino to maintain their sovereignty. Eventually, they wrote their constitution, the oldest one on earth, the Legge Statue Republicae Sancti Marini, which is actually six books written in Latin in the 16th century. Yeah, San Marino, it's not just a community of farmers in the random hills. It's a community driven by the inspiration of a saint that encouraged them to hold on to the reins of their own domain. And it worked! Anyway, if you decide to visit San Marino, it's under the top places to check out the Basilica of San Marino, the Liberty Square and statue, the Sacello di San Marino. If you want collector's coins or stamps on your passport, go to the tourism office, the Crossbow Quarry Cavern, Monte Ceretto Park and Adventure Park, the Museum of Vampires and Werewolves, Old Cervale Castle, the Passage of Witches. No. No. Mm -mm. No. 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 Do. You see the fucking fog? 
in the, in the castle blurry? No. And how narrow that? No, that's a death trap. You're going to get gobbled up by fucking something spooky. No. Is the Museum of Weapons in Chista, oh, hell yeah. the Torture Museum, the Museum uh. of Curiosities, the Ancient Arms Museum, the San Francis Museum, the State Museum, and the most notable site of the country, the Torre Guaita, and her two Sounds sisters, like Tower like, Chesta, and the like smallest Montale, which Montale is not open to the public. And Aww. everywhere you go in the country, you see statues and tributes to San Marino himself. See how many you can find. So yeah, as you can see, San Marino is a myriad of quirky and traditional sites. No idea why they have a vampire museum, but it was works let them have their fun in any case within those 23 square Bell. miles 61 square kilometers they still have quite a few natural sites which brings us to bum, bum, bum. now we've done micro states on this channel before and when you have a very limited amount of space you're probably gonna have to find ways to make money that don't require massive farm fields san marino has their own way of playing the game first of all the country is entirely mountainous located in the apennine mountain chain that creates the spine of the italian peninsula extending all the way north to south this mountain chain is essentially part of the smaller thrust fault lines that push from the adriatic lithosphere or microplate which explains why sometimes minor tremors and earthquakes might occur but nothing too serious as mentioned in the center where the capital lies is the limestone mass and highest point of the country mount titano at about 740 meters high from these hills flow many small creeks and rivers like the Ausa, marano and fimicello rivers and bisecting the country in the southwest side is the appropriately named san marino river the country does not have any major natural inland bodies of water the closest thing would probably be lago de faitano a small artificial body of water used for sport fishing near the border of the faitano area otherwise as you can see in the valleys far Farms and ranches dominate the remainder of the landscape. Fun fact, because of Mount Titano, sometimes San Marino is also called the Titanic Republic. San Marino is a country that knows how to handle things. They have no external debt, they actually have a budget surplus, and they get somewhere oh. around 3.2 million tourists a year, about a hundred times their entire population. And Dang. despite agriculture not being a real principal industry, I mean, with their limited area, about three quarters of their land is given to permanent agriculture, and about 17% of their land is arable. And with that, it is now time for my triple shot of espresso break usually noah comes in but noah obviously can't be here because we can only have one guest host hannah so that means art is gonna have to fill in for today yeah hey guys now for san marino the real money comes from three main sources banking and finance the largest company in the country is agricola as well as business and tourism about half the economy in itself is based on tourism making about a quarter of the gdp and sales tax is actually He's doing a pretty good job of glancing down but then remembering the sentence and then glancing back up and keeping it going like doing a good job at that of what it is in italy this is why so many people love coming here for shopping especially stamp and coin enthusiasts for the rare collectible san marino lira discontinued after switching to the euro even though they're not even part of the eu in addition if you go to the outskirts along the country's borders you'll often see massive warehouses or factories owned by outside companies this is because san marino only taxes corporate profit at 19 percent five percent capital gains and 13 percent withholding tax interest contrast that with italy Italy's 24%, which is higher than the EU's average around 22%. Hmm. I like this guy. In addition, San hmm. Marino is known to have some quirky items that are actually otherwise illegal to buy outside the country, like guns and weaponry, like swords and crossbows, things that can kill you. Why am I thinking about murder? <laughs> because we just talked about weapons that could murder you. Oh, that's right. San Marino actually has the highest rate of car ownership in the world, and it is the only country with more cars than people. Are okay. they rich over there? It was like Monaco. Monaco. Remember we did the Monaco country? Yeah. Um, not as rich as Monaco, though. Otherwise, within the limited hills and cliffs... Was he around for Monaco, though? Has he been around that long? But he joined relatively recently. Cliffs, you can still find some pretty cool wildlife. And with that, we are going to go to Gary Harlow. He's actually not here right now, so who do we have, Paul? Hannah's going to have to fill in this time. Um, I need a hat. Um... I got this thing from Morocco. San Marino is a tiny nation, but by no means devoid of nature. I shouldn't be doing this accent. No, it's terrible, <laughs> Hannah. <laughs> For one, you'll find animals that are common throughout bad. Italy and Southern Europe. Their abundance of grasslands, rivers, and didn't. creeks give a- If she had committed to the bit, she's an actress, so I know she understands this. <laughs> um, she had committed to the bit and into the character. It would have been fine. But she was. She started going. She was like, "I don't. I'm not feeling it." And that's what 
killed it. <laughs> the home to mammals like cross foxes, hedgehogs, horseshoe bats, otters, and the least weasel, known as the smallest carnivore on the planet. Don't let the little guy's red coat with white Yo, belly I'm and so small, cute, cute stubby pets. snout fool you. When it's time for mating season, they have some of the most violent courtships documented in the mammal world. In <laughs> addition, about 96 species of birds can be found migrating Bird. and nesting, everything from swans, European honey buzzards, peregrine falcons, barn owls, and spotted woodpeckers. It you know, I don't think I've ever seen an owl in real life. I've seen eagles because America <laughs> and hawks, but never, never, never owls. Never seen an owl. And that's all for Gary Harlow. <laughs> Thank you, Hannah Harlow, or uh, whatever your name is for this segment. I don't, I honestly don't care. And now we finish off this segment as we always do with what? With f f food, baby, food. You like food art? Yeah, I do. I love food. <laughs> <laughs> now, as you might suspect, San Marino's cuisine is very similar to that of Italy's. Of course, you will find pasta and pizza around every corner. But they do have their own specialties as well. Capoletti, Pasatelli, Ciambella, Bustrengo, San Marino style lasagna, and Pentalacchia liquor. And these cakes are sold everywhere, mm. but they're just kind of like a, you know, gimmick snack oh. thing for tourists. And many might consider the national- They look good. <laughs> dish, Piadina. <laughs> that looks pretty good. It looks like a Italian taco. Yes, even a small country can have their own charm and flair. Like the people in their cold- You know what, that- that was a short food segment, but that's fine. But also, we've gone past Italy, and, you know, you could just do more food. I want more food. I just want more food, okay? And it doesn't have to be extremely long. Like, I don't know, two minutes tops? A minute? Really? Probably would be more than fine, but, like, I don't know, 30 seconds? Doesn't feel right. Just covering a few foods just doesn't feel quite right. Culture, which brings us to... No, I swear, because we're getting closer and closer to it day by day. The United States episode. I swear, if that food segment is less than two minutes, I will be pissed. Because you got Cajun food. You got East Coast. You got the fucking Appalachians. You got West Coast. You got Texas. You got the Midwest. You got the Northeast. Like, oh, if there is, you got the Deep South. You got barbecue. I swear, if that food is, that segment is less than two fucking minutes, I will be pissed. I will give that video a zero out of ten. Anyways, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Thank you for filling in, Art. Here, um, of course. Hand sanitizer. Uh, wash your hands. All right, I'm you're not that dirty, but you always will be to me. By the way, the people here are called Samaranese. There's no N, not San Marinese. Samaranese, two N's. Got it? Good. Throughout history, the Samaranese have had a saying, Noti a noi, ignoti agli altri. Know ourselves, but unknown to others. The Samaranese are kind Ominous. of like proud of their distinct identity rooted in unfamiliarity. In any case, this is how you break down the population. The country is made up of about 34,000 people. Oh, and damn. It's the fifth smallest country in population on earth. The country is predominantly Samaranese at about 86%, whereas the remaining population at about 4,800 inhabitants, or about 14% of the country, are foreign born, mostly from Italy and Romania, as well as other parts of Europe. Keep in mind, What's there are Romania about 12,000 Samaritanese nationals in diaspora, mostly in Italy, France, and the USA. They use the euro as their currency. They use the types C, F, and L plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the... Damn straight they do. Damn fucking straight. The road. Now, when it comes to identity, although, yes, the national language of San Marino is Italian, and many Samaritanese people have Italian ancestry, regardless, do not call these people Italians. They are very proud of their Samaritanese heritage. I mean, when you're part of an exclusive club with less people than the maximum capacity during peak season at Disneyland, mm. you're kind of special. By the way, as a Californian, I gotta say, Disneyland is so overrated. Don't even bother with that place. Six Flags, way better. Anyway, for what it's worth- mm -mm, No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. As someone that has been to Disney World and Six Flags, maybe it's Midwest Six Flags sucks ass, but no. And also, maybe it's just because I do not like roller coasters. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like both are overly expensive, but it's kind of like the perception of them, right? 
when you perceive Disney World and Disneyland, you're like, that's expensive. But it's kind of, in a way, you expect it to be expensive, even though it probably shouldn't be. Um, that's the expectation it has now, right? It's something you save up for and go to. You make it, it's a special occasion. Six Flags is not that. <laughs> Yet it's still pretty kind of expensive to go. Um, and it shouldn't be, right? Like, if Disney World and Disneyland are the places where, like, that's a vacation you save up for, you plan, you plan a, a couple years ahead of time or however long, um, depending upon situ circumstance it t uh, you want to save up for, right? That, that's that. Um, Six Flags is a place you should just be able to drive to on a weekend and afford. That's not true. At least in my case. At least the way I perceive it. Or being Samaritanese comes with a lot of unique traditions and customs. For one, the majority of the country at somewhere around 97% claim to be affiliated with the Catholic Church. I mean, shocker, they were founded by a saint. However, there is Ooh. no Episcopal See in San Marino. And they actually fall under the Diocese of Montefeltro in Italy. If you don't know what that is, basically the Catholic Church kind of like organizes their churches in worldwide districts called dioceses. It's confusing. Even I don't get it. And I actually have an uncle who's a Franciscan friar in the Catholic in order. Anywha, San Marino is also noted for their unique government system. They are one of only three diarchies in the world, as in countries that have two official heads you think of they state. Kiss? And they've been doing it since 1243. I think These heads kiss. of state are known as captain regents. They are chosen by council members that are voted in every five years. The captain regents must be at least 25 years old, and their terms last only six months, which makes it the shortest head of state hmm. term limit on earth. They are allowed to have unlimited terms afterwards, but they have to wait three years until they can be re-elected and this so kind of very romanesque uh consulship kind of Leo there. It also means San Marino has had the highest number of female heads of state out of any country in the world. Anyway, what makes San Marino distinct culturally? Well, that brings us to... And of course, that's something they can do because they're such a small country, right? It doesn't take much uh, to vote uh, in that country, right? So, like, having that kind of turnover of six months um, is, like... Right, they're, they're such a small community, 34,000 people. I think that's a little bit bigger than where I the town that I live grew up in. I don't know the population of where I live. Um but um yeah. Word of mouth um for a community like that, that kind of voting cycle it makes sense. Random Hannah with culture stuff. <laughs> All right, guys, it is good to be back. San Marino is a country that definitely honors its traditional medieval side. In July, during the Revocation Festival, you can see the flag throwing performances everywhere. And when a new set of captain regents are voted in in either April or October, they have the investor ceremony. The largest national festival would probably be on September 3rd, though, the National Feast of San Marino. Samaritanese people are also known for kind of being weapon enthusiasts, hence why they have so many weapon shops. Their specialty? The crossbow. Oh, that's so cool. They even have a crossbow corps of about 80 members that train and dress up in medieval clothing and perform regularly at festivals year-round. For sports, this is where things get a little interesting. In Europe, whenever San Marino plays football or soccer, it's kind of like, Yes! Yeah! But not for the reasons you'd think. I am so gonna win money by betting against them! See, their national <laughs> soccer slash football team debuted in 1990, and since then has only won one game against Liechtenstein in 2004. This makes them officially the worst team not only in Europe, but in the whole world. Their starting lineups often have few actual professional players, and they even had an accountant as their goalie once. However, what they lack <laughs> in footwork, they make up in arm work. Their baseball team is much better. They've been champions in Italy four times, one, two. Okay, but it, and it's a, baseball's an American sport. <laughs> it, it, Europeans don't really like, at least in my experience, don't really care for baseball. So, like, them just being champions in Italy, I don't know, doesn't it? Two Italian Cups and three European Championships. Yeah, being European, I don't know, that doesn't, that's not that impressive. For <laughs> uh, Tell me if they beat, like, the Japanese team. 
Uh, if they're if they're winning against Japanese uh, uh, baseball teams, then then they're serious about it. But if they're not, no. Leagues. In addition, they have a strong passion for motorcycle racing and often perform very well at Grand Prix events, mostly practicing at the Ramini Coast Racetrack. And finally, some Maronese people are lovers of classical art and music. Me too. For classic music, these two composers are highly regarded figures. You know what I just okay. realized? This is kind of the music segment. I just took over Keith's segment. I think I won the feud. Keith, haha. -ha. I guess that's it for you now, Hannah. Um, social <laughs> distancing push. I got the mic. All right, and with that, it's time for the history segment. We already kind of explained the origins of this country, so let's just kind of skip forward to the 15th century. 1463, the country gains its last new territories, which are the current borders. 1503, it was taken over by this guy for about Cesare. six months. Don't you kill him in Assassin's Creed? Is that Assassin's Creed 2? Or is that one? I think it was in, yeah, it was in Assassin's Creed 2. Because Brotherhood is entirely in Rome. And then Revelate. No, I think he's been a couple. Mm. But I think Cesare Borgia was. Yeah, kill him in a sense. Yeah. 1543, this dude tried to take over but got lost in fog. Occupied <laughs> again in 1739 by the papal governor of Ravenna. Napoleonic years. Napoleon actually kind of liked San Marino and offered to extend their territory, but they declined. During the Union years, Garibaldi and his wife took refuge in San Marino. He promised they could stay independent after Italy became united. World War I, World War II, they tried to stay as neutral as possible, but still got bombed. They actually became yeah. communists for a few years. They joined. Comrades. In the UN, OECD, and the Council of Europe, tourism and sales of cheesy souvenirs skyrocket, and here we are today. Some of the most notable. You know, for a country that fucking small, that was a good history segment. <laughs> that was a really good history segment. People and famous people of this country that you guys suggested I mention include composer, playwright, and bishop Francesco Maria Marini, 60s and 70s icon like pop star Little Tony, Olympian Alessandra Parelli, four time Eurovision singer Valentina Moneta, Captain Regent Assunta Tina Maloney, these soccer players Marco Macina, Simone Pacini, and Davide Simoncini, Grand Prix motorcyclists Manuel Poggiali, and Alex De Angelis. So there you go. Not bad for a country that has fewer people than Bob Saget has had family members on his TV career. And speaking of family, that brings us to... Now, as we kind of already explained... Have we gotten to the... Have we passed the point in geography now when Bob Saget died? No, because this is 2020. Bob Saget died like... A year ago? Can't remember. And much of San Marino's very existence depended greatly on their ability to avoid and get away from conflict. They've always had to kind of talk their way out of trouble. I like what Samaritanese geography Diego says. He says, I think this is maybe the most beautiful thing about us, the victory of words over arms. That's cool, I like that. But that doesn't mean San Marino is a total hermit. They definitely roll with their crew. For one, they have three embassies, including the Military Order of Malta, which is not actually a real country, but it kind of is, but that's a whole other story, and eight <laughs> honorary consulates within their country, and over 85 non-resident embassies and consulates abroad. In addition, they actually have a very interesting connection to all the other microstates of Europe, like Andorra, Liechtenstein, Monaco, and Malta. All these countries take part in the games of smaller states of Europe, which also include larger small states like Luxembourg, Cyprus, Montenegro, and Iceland. Even the Vatican is invited and set to possibly take part for the first time in 2021. Generally, other hmm. Catholic nations like Did to the nod their heads at San Marino in respect when they see the pride and perseverance of a tenacious little guy that outlasted all of them. Croatia especially has a soft spot since the founder of San Marino was from Rob Island off their Dalmatian coast, which interestingly enough, people from Poland and Russia are very frequent visitors, so much to the point where many shopkeepers in San Marino are actually able to communicate in these languages, which pleases the customers. Even more interesting, Iran has close ties to San Marino, business-wise at least, as Iran-based airlines that head to Europe often stop over in Rimini Airport under the San Marino Authority side because San Marino is one of the 
only few European countries that has a refueling agreement with Iran. When it comes to their best huh. friends, however, it's really no shocker, Italy usually ranks number one. Italians, especially from the Romagna region, and the Samaritans are essentially one family. They are culturally similar, they share many of the same values, people often commute to each other's countries for work and school, intermarriages are very common, and overall, they get each other the best. In they conclusion, kids. San Marino kind of started out as a country from a dude that wanted to escape constant trouble. Little did he know that 1700 years later, millions of people would be visiting every year, lining up to check out wacky vampire museums and buying guns and crossbows from the money they made from betting against their soccer football team. Oh, San Marino. Keeping a low profile in the coolest way possible. Stay tuned. Saltome and Principe is coming up next. And that was Geography Now, San Marino. Uh, got nothing to add here at the end. This was a good episode. Um, felt pretty well paced. Um, don't really, yeah, don't really got any complaints about it. I, I thought this was good. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed as well. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.